Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Moray Matan, Pastor Matt McEwen, and this week our Torah portion is Tetzaveh. How do you feel about olives or olive oil? I don't know that I've ever met an olive that I didn't like. <laughs> My wife is not a fan of olives. She doesn't like them, but I love them, and she buys them for me from time to time as a little gift. Some that she uh, likes to buy me sometimes have uh, little things stuffed into the olives, like uh, blue cheese or garlic or something like that. I love them. I love green olives. I love black olives. I love the Kal Kalamata olives that are prepared in a, a Greek style. One of the things I really loved about being in Israel is uh, having such access to such great olives. I also enjoy olive oil, and I had a wonderful opportunity on a couple of occasions to tour an olive oil factory that is over in Israel that makes olive oil that is done in an organic way, and it's made so fresh that it has an expiration date. What this man who owns this company told us is that if your olive oil does not have sediment in it, and if it doesn't have an expiration date, then it isn't as good as it could be. You see, if olive oil has been so processed that it doesn't have an expiration, well, then it's not very fresh or not very good. And so we had the opportunity to buy olive oil there and I brought some back for family members, those of us that, that love dipping bread in olive oil or cooking with olive oil. It's just a wonderful thing. I love olives and olive oil. Well, did you know that in this Torah portion this week, in Tetzave, the Jewish people are compared to olive oil, to olives. Let's read this passage. This comes from Exodus chapter 27, verse 20, and the comment comes once again from this series of commentaries that we're going through this year called Wellspring of Torah. This particular comment comes from Tzorur Hamor, and here's what it says. In verse 20 of chapter 27, and you shall command the children of Israel that, you, that they bring to you pure olive oil. Now, here's what's interesting. The Jewish people are likened to an olive because an olive only yields its oil when it is crushed. The Jews reveal their true virtues only when they are made to suffer. The Jews are also likened to oil, which never mixes with any other liquid, but always remains on top. For the Jews always remain above other nations and never mingle with them. This comes from the Midrash. It is remarkable that although they have had to suffer torture and oppression, they have remained on a high level above that of their oppressors and have steadfastly refused to mingle with them. What a wonderful object lesson this is, using the olive and using olive oil. The idea of you only get this olive oil, you only can extract it if the olive itself is crushed. Now, this of course reminds me of the place known as Gatchmanim or Gethsemane, this olive grove that is in Jerusalem that you can visit. And some of the olive trees there are said to be over a thousand years old. Some people even believe that some of the olive trees there are over 2,000 years old, that they may have actually been there when Yeshua was in this olive grove, this place of pressing, when he was praying before his crucifixion. You see, this idea of, of crushing the olive, now, I'm not sure how accurate this is or if this is just something that they tell you on a biblical tour, but I'll tell you a story that they told me at uh, Nazareth Village. This idea of the, you know, the first drop of oil goes to the lampstand, the menorah in the tabernacle and, and later in the Holy Temple. The olive goes through a series of pressings. At first, the olive is only pressed with other olives in bags uh, by its own weight, and the oil seeps out. And then the olive is crushed using weights made of stone. And then finally, the olive is crushed in a, like a mill, and really the last bit, the last drop of oil is harvested from those olives. 
Now, what's interesting is this place called Gethsemane, in English we call it a garden, but that's not really what it was. It, it is a, a place where an olive press was and a place where an olive grove was. Now, when you see Yeshua praying and then going to see about his apostles, his disciples, and they are sleeping, and he goes to pray and he comes back and they're sleeping again and he goes to pray, this three times supposedly corresponds to the three pressings of the olive. And at least in a Midrashic way, we could look at Yeshua sweating drops of blood as a symbol of him being crushed like an olive. It's almost as if heaven and earth are pressing in on him and the pressure is so much that it is literally squeezing the blood out of him in that olive grove as he prays. It says there in the Gospels that his soul is weary to the point of death. And he even asked his heavenly father if there was any way that this cup could pass from him, then let it be so. However, he said, not my will, but your will be done. Sometimes the oil of our lives, as it were, only is produced through crushing, through pain, through hardship, through pressing. Remember that scripture that says that we are pressed, but not crushed. We are struck down, but not destroyed. As you go through difficult times, remember the olive and the olive oil and the pressing and the squeezing, the strain that that olive must go through, even to the point of being crushed so that that olive oil can be extracted. It is not sometimes in the good times and the mountaintop experiences, but rather in the negative times, the bad times, in the valley of the shadow of death, when we see what we are truly made of and what our faith is worth. As you go through difficult situations and as you feel crushed by these circumstances, I pray that what would result would be a pure oil that is used to be a light, just as the oil was used in the lampstand, the menorah. I pray that this oil would be used to light the lamps of your life so that you would be a shining light in a dark world so that people would see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Thank you for joining me once again this week. I am More Matan, and if you'd like to study where I do at Yeshivat Shuvu, you can go to shuvu.tv and fill out an application and join the largest online Jewish yeshiva, Messianic Jewish yeshiva in the world. Thank you for joining me once again. Shabbat Shalom and Kol Tuv.